So in this video, make sure you watch because I go over all the top sanding mistakes that I made when I was a beginner. And if you are a seasoned woodworker and you're watching this, let us know in the comment section if you've made these mistakes. All right, Sedge, what are we talking about today? Okay, so what we're doing is we're gonna talk about some of the top sanding mistakes. The first one I wanna go over, and I don't wanna go too long on it, but it's how you hold your work. So using a random orbit sander, this wants to shift as the pad's spinning. Right. So we gotta lock it down somehow. So the first option would be something like this. Okay, but what's the problem? It's in the way. Exactly. There's the same thing with this one. You need a couple of clamps with this. This goes in here and locks down, right? Right. Okay, but what happens is it doesn't move, but you always have to move that and you stand a chance of miring the work. Oh, okay. Okay, so years and years ago, I bought something like this. Okay, and feel that. And I'm gonna take this off and just lay it down. Okay. So what happens with that is this keeps it from shifting, huh. but it wears down too much. So I just got these and I got to show you these because I think these are really, really impressive. All right, so check them out. Oh, wow. What I did is I took this reamer and I cleaned out the hole, okay, of the 20 millimeter. But what it does is when I put this in my drill, it creates a little chamfer here. And I'll do another video on that with you on this one. But what these are, and feel them, that's a oh. little rubber pad, and I'll just space them out like this in the table. I think you get six of them. Okay, and I'll just space them out like this, just like this. Yeah, we'll put one here. Oh, look at that, we got an extra. <laughs> okay, but if you notice, now it doesn't move. So I've seen in the past, uh, what people came out with were known as cookies and they were rather tall. Mm -hmm. That's good for routing. There's a version of these that are a little bit taller as well, but check it out. And I have, uh, we'll have a, uh, a link in the video on where to get these and the reamer. But if you, I like the low profile and yeah. they just fit perfect. And you'll see when we're sanding today, it doesn't move whatsoever. <laughs> Mistake number two. Okay, this, I saw you, Big D, going like this, mm -hmm. kind of aimlessly, and everybody does it, I did it. So I'm just gonna go like this. Now, a lot of times you just concentrate on sanding this one area here, mm -hmm. where that's great, but you'll get undulations in it. Oh, okay. And not only undulations, you won't get some of this oxidation off of here. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna go in a pattern, back and forth, mm -hmm. okay? Overlapping, I usually do like a third of the pad, okay? And then I'll go back and forth, okay. and then I'll do six to eight inch circles with the pad. That way there, I cover the whole material mm -hmm. and I'm not just sitting there, I'm moving the sandal, so watch. Very good. So as we go back and forth, to and fro, you're going to see where I made this pencil mark. It may do, it may take a couple of passes, but you'll be consistent. Number three. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Hey, you want to avoid one of these things called swirl marks, right? Everybody hates the swirl marks. You see them at the end when you rake a light or when you put your finish on. I know, and it's a drag, <laughs> okay? I usually sell it for curly, uh, curly walnut or curly maple, <laughs> okay? So, one of the things that you just did, okay, and I had to make you do it because you, are, you already know how to sand, is when you start a sander, always start it on, okay? You're gonna go and eliminate those swirl marks. 
but always pick it up off the material. If you leave it on the material, you'll have swirl marks as the machine stops. Always pick it off and then turn it off. Yep. All right, Sedge, what are you using on this thing? 80 grit? Nah! It's one of those mistakes every woodworker makes beginning. This is plywood. It is surface sanded to 120 coming off the laminator oh. or the, the roller that puts this all together. And then they, they put it through some wide belt sanders and then it comes to us. So I never start with 80, but a typical woodworker, they think they have to start with 80. No, you want to start with 120 because you don't want to burn through the veneer. Now, why do we have 40, 60, 80, 100? Good question. Okay, it's all about, and this is a huge topic that I love talking about, because I'm not going to start with 120 on this. And the reasoning is because I would hate to sand. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'll start with 40 or 60, or even if you start with 80, it's going to take you time to bring this down to where you want it. So, we bring it up, and what grit do we stop at? 220. No! <laughs> well, you can if you want. <laughs> if you want to waste your money. Mm -hmm. And that's what woodworkers don't understand. Hear me out on this. Okay. If you go to 220, it doesn't matter if you're using an oil, you lose depth of absorption. Mm. Uh, if uh, you're going to spray some lacquer or seal coat, you'll lose some adhesion point. If you, sir, if you sand above 180 grit, stop tops at 180. I usually stop at 150 and huh. I still, cause what you're going to feel is the finish, not the sanded product. Uh -huh. And always check with a um, light to make sure that you don't have any swirl marks. There you go. Hey, good job. You took it off. All right. So there's sometimes you'll get swirl marks another way. Oh, it's great to have a dust extract hooked up to your sander that way there you're sanding the product or your board, not more sawdust. Hmm. And that's always a great tip. But what I like is to hook it up to a dust extractor that has variable suction. And you're gonna go, why variable suction? So when you're sanding this in a couple of seconds, you're gonna notice that it's pulling down too much. So the variable suction is right here. And we have it with an auto start. And you notice that it automatically comes on. But what you're going to hear, but you'll feel we break the surface tension so it's pulling less into the material. And it's really good when you're sanding finish. So let's get started. You can, yeah, you can feel it, right? Good. Cool. And there you go. Ah. Okay. That is a big mistake that I always used to make. Watch, I see you almost using this and the pad is just about stomping. You have to choose the right tool. The tool is the paper. You have to choose the right sander to move the tool. Oh. But the tool needs to be the right grit. If you are putting too much pressure, lower the grit. You should allow the machine to move the tool properly in other words, you don't have to put a lot of pressure, lower the grip. And you notice that the pad is spinning freely, then you have the right pressure, if any pressure. Let the tool do the cutting. <laughs> it doesn't get old. Hey, why are you using a five inch sander? Because it's the one you gave me. Oh, <laughs> good answer. <laughs> so let's turn it over and let's look at these. This is a six inch sander. If I can coach anybody on a huge tip, if I'm sanding a big surface like this, a lot of people go, the difference between a five and a six is one inch. Yeah, it is. No, it's not. This has 42% more surface area. So don't make that mistake and use a five inch for everything. Get a six inch sander for something like this and you'll have your time. Come in here, cameraman, and look at that. That's why, and that's a huge mistake that everybody makes, is rolling that sander 
on a corner. So think about it, you've gone through the whole process of ripping the ply, of cross-cutting the ply. Maybe you've punched the holes with the LR32 system, you veg banded it, and you go to do your final sanding and look what happens. So one of the top things, let me get in here, one of the top things I can teach you is when you are working an edge with plywood, I want you to notice this. Okay, look how thin that top veneer is. So you've got to be careful about sanding and sanding too much. So be very cautious around those corners and edges. Do not sit on the sander. Okay, be very cautious. So, so there you go. Those are some of the top mistakes that I made and hopefully you won't make and hopefully <laughs> you won't make. And as we always end these videos, be positive. Stay sharp. Wicked, Wicked sharp.